Hello and welcome to Endor Model Railway. I'm Jonathan. This channel will follow my experience and progress in building a small N-gauge model railway. My N-gauge rolling stock collection started 15 years ago with some second-hand coal wagons and a short piece of track, which together I used as a static display on top of my computer's monitor. To start with, that's all I had planned, but ultimately I couldn't resist buying a locomotive to go with the train to make it look complete. It wasn't all that long until I found a piece of wood from an old cabin bed and nailed a loop of track to it. Over the next year or so I bought some more rolling stock and some new locomotives, but then I had to move house and I had to downsize. Continuing a theme of beds for baseboards, I found a smaller piece of wood from an old mid-sleeper bed. It was a very small layout, but it was okay, until I got my first tender locomotive. I was really pleased with the locomotive itself, but it wouldn't go around the curves, it would derail. The curves were first radius N gauge set track, and it just wasn't going to work. The locomotive stayed in its box, awaiting a day when a bigger railway with bigger curves could be built. I started to think about what I could do for a bigger, permanent layout. I had plenty of grand ideas, but ultimately over several years I never even got to baseboard construction. Eventually I realised that if I was going to have my lovely tender locomotive running, and possibly other similar ones in the future, I needed an intermediate just get something done approach. My solution was to buy a cheap, flat door. The door is 76 centimetres wide, which is wide enough to have two loops of track which should be big enough to allow large locomotives to go around them without trouble. It has the advantage of being ready-made, so I don't procrastinate about building baseboards, and it's light enough for me to carry between storage and my dining table, which is where I play trains. So, an N-gauge railway on a door. Endor Railway. I've got a few plans for the railway that I've settled on. Train control will be by DCC. There won't be any underboard wires or components, and it won't be rigidly set in any era or region. I don't know much about the different DCC systems that are out there, what they can and can't do, what their advantages and disadvantages are, but they do all seem very expensive to me. Eventually, I chose Gauge Master Prodigy Express. It's marketed as a basic system. Time will tell if it's too basic for Endor. Going with DCC does mean that I'm not going to be able to run some of my original locomotives, but I think that's worth it for the advantages that a DCC system brings. Not having any underboard components on our railway is partly out of necessity and partly for ease of getting started. For the railway to be stable when it's perched on my round dining table, it needs a flat base. I'll also be carrying it back and forth a fair bit, so it could do without the extra weight of an underframe. I suspect that connecting components would be much easier above board and I think I should be able to hide the various components under scenery eventually. For the railway theme, I had originally decided to go with Great Western Steam, but my railway interests are broader than that. So I've decided not to constrain myself with making a true-to-life model railway. But since Great Western Steam is my favourite, when I make buildings and signals, I think they're going to have that kind of look. Before trying to lay any track, I decided I really ought to plan the layout. Even though it's going to be a simple loop with some sidings, I need to make sure I buy the right points and that everything is going to fit together well. I had a look at some options and eventually settled on a program called AnyRail. I've seen other people on YouTube who use AnyRail Pro, but I found that the basic version had all the features that I wanted for free, so that was great. The benefit of planning ahead of time is that you know how long sidings are going to be and at what angles they're going to come off from the track. I've in the past tended to be over-optimistic about how many sidings I can fit in and how long they'll be. Although this railway is still in very early construction, I've been surprised at how much I've had to learn in order to make decisions and to get something running. As I go along in these videos, I hope to share some tips. Some of them will be about the very basics. Although I've owned rolling stock and track for many years, I'd say I'm a novice in this hobby because I've never really built a model railway before. At times, I've found it hard to know how to do what have ended up being very simple things. In these videos, I hope I'll be able to help other people who are in a similar situation. I hope you'll enjoy watching this basic layout evolve into a miniature world of its own. If you have thoughts about Endor Railway, please leave them in the comment section. Bye bye for now. 